right now, I am pleased to welcome to our virtual stage, the Global President and Chief Revenue Officer for our partners, Adomni. Will you please welcome Mike Cooper to the virtual stage? Hey, Mike, how you doing? Hey, Danny, I'm, I'm well, thanks, I'm well, how are you? Great, great. My colleague Matt will be back to do your Q and A's and takeaways. We'll okay, see you soon. Great, um, great, great. you were in Vegas yesterday. Next time you're you're in town, we'll we'll show you a good time. Count on it, Mike. Thank you for having me. Um, Adomni, obviously being an out and programmatic platform, that that will be the, the subject matter that I'll, I'll talk about. But I am going to focus on a few things. I'm going to talk about what we mean by programmatic out of home, but more so than getting wrapped up in technology and, and, and data and things that we, I think, I think we talk about arguably too much. I want to talk about why it's important, things we possibly need to avoid, and also what the future might look like for us. So the first thing that I, I really want to stress is that however we evolve in terms of technology and, and data and how we can deliver and, and target an audience, I, I don't feel evolutions in technology are, are here to save us. I, I think the medium has before anything else, a unique interaction with the audience and the ability to weave its way into the fabric of society in a way that no other medium can. So it's as exciting as what's happening is, it's, additions to what we can do. It's here to set us above other medium, not to make us like one. And it's a combination. There's still value in putting Beyonce 900 feet tall overlooking Sunset Boulevard. If on top of that, we can target a certain audience on the day the album drops, people that bought the last album, then all the better. But it's a combination of the two that make us exciting. And the reason I'm not going to dwell and, and be... Um, so data centric on what programmatic is, is, is that at base level, I'm speaking to an audience that know, and the definition from a dictionary perspective isn't massively different to everyone else's. It's different because of our medium. It's essentially being able to reach an audience in a more real time, communicated by data. We're not gonna make bold claims about instantaneous creative delivery by real time data, but certainly being a lot more automated, a lot more accurate and a lot more relevant. So again, base level, we have the ability now to take something that was incredibly complicated. There were well over a thousand out of home vendors in the US. And historically you'd find a region, you'd have to find the vendors that all respond in a different fashion. So we now have the ability to immediately upload our geo targets, find out who's there, what inventory they've got and how that interacts with the audience at large. We can start to specify by media type what we feel is relevant or what we're informed is relevant, what we want to exclude and what feels right, which also means a better opportunity for the, the masses of long tail media owners that might have really relevant place based opportunities, but never get close to the massive brands because of the speed of which things traditionally operate. So we have the ability to really look into the infrastructure of the inventory and, and target everybody. Optimize the audience by segments, by your budget, by day part. Yes, things as arbitrary as demographics, but working with several partners, we have many, many different lifestyle interactions of how we can reach. But more importantly in this sector is, is using your own data, is using clients' data. If, if you're a motor dealer, you may well know that typically people buy a car every five years and you've actually got the data of everyone that bought a car four years ago. So having the ability to target those people is, is, is a massive thing for us and to use clients own data. And then obviously strategy comes in here, the budget allocation, the day part allocation, the budget allocation by format. In short, a massive amount of flexibility across the whole medium to be very, very accurate in how you reach and how you target your, your audience. Upload your creative. Um, Quite often in this space, we'll be buying across a massive amount of, um, of, of different formats, different shapes, different specifications. We usually need a few of those and then we can resize to fit this for you and, and launch a campaign. It's as simple as that. It's effectively six easy steps to go from planning a campaign at base level with, with, with a brief and a strategy and then launching a campaign live. Taking a process that historically took to be kind about it, oh, historically it took days, often, often much longer than that. We're able to do in minutes and, and launch in, in at once with the only delay of creative approval, launch pretty quick. What that means to us as a medium 
is our ability to turn on a dime. Typically at this time of year in the not too distant past, uh, things like Thanksgiving and, and the holidays that are approaching now would have, would have been dead for us because we wouldn't have been able to turn things around quick enough. Whereas now we're still laying money en masse into Q4 on a, on a daily basis. And people are able to re react to our medium as they know what their brands are going to do for the holidays, what offers and deals they will put on. We can react in the same way that their online activity does and execute campaigns right up until the, and, until the last minute. One of the other areas, I guess, that we, we've been questioned on is, is accountability. So having this evolution into data and technology also gives us the ability to, to be more accurate with, with, with attribution. So by sharing a Dominus playlist with partners like Mira and M4, we're able to use mobile location data to see who was exposed, who wasn't exposed, and to understand lift. I'm getting messages here, which I am going to check just to make sure it's not one saying no one can hear me. No, thank you. Apologies for that. Again, the virtual world, huh? Um, so again, the attribution has become really, really important to us. Um, and I'm going to be a little bit flippant here about some of the positives of the medium, but the, the, it, it doesn't come without a warning. You've probably heard your out home salesperson say, we don't suffer from ad blocker software. We don't. It's great. Nobody's wearing blinkers so they don't see out of home. And I'll explain why in a little while. But we have to be mindful of how technology evolves, but how society evolves well to make sure that these kind of risks don't come about. So through the massive success and evolution of, of online, they inherited a lot of problems that were unforeseen and we shouldn't have that issue. We need to keep an eye out for things like this. We're never below the fold or above the fold, it, it, it's there, but we are starting to deal on a rotation basis and on a day parting basis. So we have to be really, really accurate in our reporting and be mindful of it. And as of today, there are, there are no bots um, giving the equivalent of a click to each of our outdoor formats. But uh, to future gays, Maybe there will be Amazon drones flying around that are getting recognized at some point. So again, as flippant as I am, and I'm using these as positives that we have above and beyond our, our, our digital competitors, um, they've also given us the benefit of foresight to be mindful of these things as we evolve in the future. One of the things that I want to avoid more than anything is, is this word. Um, I, I, I was asked to talk about out of home as a disruptor recently, and, and if I'm completely frank, I had to look it up. And the dictionary definition is something along the lines of to spoil, worsen, or mess up, in other words, cause a problem. And, and it's not something I want to do. It's not something I've ever been asked for. And if, if you look for a better word and run that through the Theosaurus, it doesn't get much better. Ironically, if you're to Google what's the absolute opposite of disruption, you, you get this list of words, which are all things that I want done for me as a consumer, things I want to do for the client, and, and, and to be deep about it and looking what's happened over the last 18 months, there, there, these are all things that I, I want to do for society. And I feel as, as, as such a monstrous industry as media is, we, we have an obligation to do that. And I, I feel by default, out of home does improve the environment for the consumer. If you think of any um, transport system in the world without out of home posters, you have this kind of prison esque like environment with a healthy wildlife. And when you add out of home into the mix, you immediately get an improved environment. This is what the New York Metro system looks like today. This was literally one of our marketeers going down with a camera and filming some things. So it's become an entertaining environment. It's become an environment where brands can share and it's evolving and it evolves to a point I want to make about the money you spend in out of home a huge percentage of it typically, go, typically goes back to the environment, to the municipality, the airport, the subway system, for the privilege of selling the space. Outfront Media have committed over a billion dollars. Now, they're one of the most savvy commercial companies in the world. They've done it because they see such value in the audience that they want to be able to sell to it. But for the privilege of selling it to it, they've had to commit to free terabyte Wi-Fi across the network, keeping it clean and a digital network that law enforcement or the medical field can take over in the drop of a hat. In short, for the privilege of selling to the consumer, they've had to commit to improving the consumer life. And that has become more important than, than ever. To all intents and purposes, our, our medium has been put through a, a period of prohibition. Um, the government have said, you cannot go out of your home. Uh, and we've missed it. 
The last time the US government put anything on prohibition was between 1920 and 1933, and it was alcohol. And if 1933 taught us anything, it's that when a prohibited substance has the prohibition lifted, we go out and get absolutely wasted on it. And right now, I believe we have a population that, that is absolutely lusting to get wasted on being out of home and spending more time there. We all want to get on a plane and go to a concert or, or, or go to a 10,000 people party in Vegas. Um, and now we've got an opportunity to reach this audience and improve their lives. They haven't been told they can look at Facebook or, or, or stream Netflix. And, and, you know, to touch on a point there that the majority of the money that we're spending in the digital world right now, quite opposed to giving it back to the consumer, we, we, we're often wondering we, we, who will send into space next, possibly. So how do we target this audience and what, what, is the, what are the algorithms behind the programmatic platform? Now, you know, looking for us, everyone now has this phone in, in, in their pocket with a phenomenal amount of information on there. And we obviously make the assumption that I'm talking about aggregated anonymized data where they live, where they work, where they play, how they travel between the entities. But then how does that change? How does that change by week or month or day or hour or minute? How does the weather change it? How does the political climate or sporting event change it? And then by retargeting with mobile, judging shopper patterns and social interactions and how all the mediums work together, it's no great stretch to think that by using artificial intelligence and, and companies like Brandthrow, we should be able to, again, aggregate and anonymize, but basically predict that if a 27-year-old girl in Detroit sees a certain combination of ads on a rainy Tuesday after her local team lost and there's a political election coming up, that combination of, of, of ads will react in her buying whatever the product is, drinking it, get on the plane or, or whatever it would be. So that's really where we're evolving in terms of how, how we deliver. But the other key thing, and I said I wasn't going to dwell on, on, on the data, I wanted to really talk about the emotion of what everybody's going through right now and how out of home plays that part. And I talked about enhancing the environment, improving the environment. This is a picture I took on arriving in Singapore not too long ago. Changi Airport in Singapore was, was one of the first airports to ever have out of home inventory included at architectural brief. For several reasons. Firstly, it generated money for the airport by selling, selling advertising there, but they're aware that the audience wanted their, their product and their brand showcased in the best possible way. And that consumers are more savvy and they want to be in an aesthetically pleasing environment. So it's no great surprise to, to look at this when you think people started putting screens in taxis not long ago, not anymore. General Motors build yellow cabs with a screen included to generate revenue through ad sales, but they had they had to add the benefit of being able to pay for your ride through that screen. Otis now build elevators with a screen incorporated in there. Yes, to generate revenue again, but also with the added benefit of giving stock prices or whatever's relevant for the building that it's in. And it's happening now on the streets of New York. Um, we have, I should also point out, this is a Google company at the back of it all. So the companies we're all excited about are excited about out of home. They're investing their media dollars in a disproportionate way and their commercial dollars in the space. And for the privilege of that, they're delivering free terabyte Wi-Fi to all five boroughs of New York. So it's no great stretch when we think of how things are architecturally included in physical things such as airports and shopping malls, etc., that the 5G city of the future that we're all talking about and that everybody's so excited about are being built from architectural city brief without a home at their foundation to generate revenue for that city because the belief is it's the absolute best way to put a brand in front of a consumer in a way that does more than just sell to them, it improves them. So these are the networks that will guide Amazon's drones and driverless cars. It's certainly what will inform law enforcement. So as an industry obligation, we're, we're a commercially focused industry that wants to grow revenue. And we want to do that by targeting the audience in the best possible way, which inevitably is out of their home where everybody wants to be. Um, but by also giving them so much more, by reinvesting the media dollars in the environment, but also providing so many other things ac across the platform that will, will help the city. Eventually, these things will be what cleans the air and what generates clean powers. The, the list goes on and on. So that's kind of it. That's, that's my soapbox rant.
for, for 15 minutes. Um, if anybody's got any questions that we don't get into today, then, then please just scan this barcode and it'll take you straight through to my email. Um, and I guess now I'm not sure if I have to stop sharing to take questions or someone's going to take over my screen. There we, there go. we go, Mike. Thank, thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you for that. That was great. We've got questions. Um, before we get to them, why don't we take a look at your key takeaways? If you could take the audience through those and we'll come back to questions. Yeah, again, I, I guess my um, the rhetoric throughout my presentation is I've, I've been trying to keep it simple. And essentially what I want people to know now is you know, we can be part of your omnichannel by someone said on the previous thing, and we should be part. We can now speak to you in a language and, and through an interface that's familiar to you, that you, you can work hand in hand with us and, and, and all of your other channels. And, and you should, because it's phenomenally important. You know, I, I mocked the word disruption earlier and, and, you know, in its true dictionary sense, disruption has been in our lives for 18 months and, and it's pretty shit. We haven't enjoyed it much. So been released out of home, I believe that most CMOs now are thinking, how do I own the sense of freedom that will come with being released out of home? Um, and point three, that's only gonna continue as that way as it's continued to be architecturally woven into society and into our lives. So think of yourself as a consumer and what excites you in your life and in, and in your job. So uh, that sounded like I did more than three, but I'm, I'm sure it's bracketed in there. No, well done. Very well done. First question, Mike, uh, comes from Julian Chu. Uh, Julian asks, what's the best practice in measuring actual impressions delivered? Are there any new techniques that you can share? Uh, I mean, that, that, that would probably be a different answer yesterday and a different answer today. I mean, pr predominantly now, um, it is delivered by mobile data and, and you know, we can, we, we've, it's getting more accurate every, every day. There are obviously through the industry bodies, lots of other way of managing the formats and there's translating what things that were built in a static world to, to monitor a digital world and how we work on that. Uh, I know we have partners at Placed IQ that are working on how do we, we take that data and, and deliver coverage and frequency against this kind of thing, which is, is, is traditionally hard. But typically now we, we can look at an audience by um, mobile data and then we can actually do the attribution studies based on creating test and control through mobile data and then even provide device IDs so we can retarget mobily as well. But again, that answer could be different again tomorrow. It's evolving every day. Fair enough, for sure. All right, so uh, are the attribution reports offered for any type of campaign? Um, yes, I mean, realistically, you have to get over 10,000 impressions for it to be really worthwhile and accurate. But the minute we get to that base, we, we and I'm sure our competitors would, would throw that in for free. And what if I need help choosing the best venue types uh, or, or other, other parameters for my campaign? How, how does that work? How can you guys help? Um, I mean, we, we do have hands-on key service for anyone that wants it, but we do have free managed services as well, or, or often for large clients, a combination of the two. So we, we have a, we have a team of at your service and hands-on people that will, will help you with that and, and would allocate to you in, in every region. We'll work with you on that and we'll either continue managed services, which again is something we, I don't think any of us charge for, certainly we don't. Um, Often that's with a view to a managed service while we train you to use the platform, if that's the preferred angle, and, and then it becomes a help desk line for whenever, you've, whenever you need any help. And then our last question from the audience, Mike, is from uh, Malin Acevedo, uh, who asks, how long do you think this would be the only way uh, to buy out of home? Uh, no more traditional static posters, kiosk, bulletins, et cetera. Um, I, I, think, I don't think, or I hope to God that, it won't go away. As I say, I think that our ability to showcase a creative for a brand on, on a massive, beautiful um, canvas that, that weaves its way into the fabric of society is vital. Now, the difference will come in that those canvases will be digital, but there will be brands that want to own them 24 hours a day, and, 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 and rightly so, but they'll, they'll, they'd use a platform like ours for dynamic creative. If it is a People are going to think I'm obsessed with Beyonce. If it is a Beyonce poster and it starts raining, she puts an umbrella up. You know, the day the album drops, it changes. So I, I still think even, you know, the large scale, large format, beautiful inventory we had, which is pivotal, will digitize, but that will just allow us to be more dynamic with, with creative. I lied, Mike. Let me sneak in one or two more while we have time. Uh, Christopher asks, what impact has iOS 14 
have on the measurement of impressions going forward? Do you know, it's, it's funny that that question comes up the most. And the, the, the answer to that is, I, I don't know, but it will have the same effect across all mediums. So we'll all remain equal. It's, it's not something that's going to suddenly decimate out of homes measurement, but no one else suffers with it. So I, I guess we're all running around now trying to find an, an alternative to it. Um, I, I think it'll, it'll end in an opted in model that will be incentivized by people so that we will still have a lot of data on people. But as I say, you know, how it changes out of home will be how it changes for everyone else. So we'll still all operate from an equal starting point. And then Ali asks, what stage are we at in the UK and Europe compared to the US in terms of adoption of digital out of home? And what are, what are the key challenges for scaling this, challenge, this channel in those markets? Well, the, the key challenge is scale. So yeah, I, I think I may be a little bit off in my data, but about 35% of the out of home inventory at the moment is, is traded programmatically in the UK in particular. Um, but you, know, you use the word scale, we're talking about a country that fits into Texas twice. So that's, that's the, the challenge of it. And inevitably people focus on where the revenue is. So New York and LA digitize first, and then you go d d down the list as you'd imagine. You know, but whereas in a country the size of the UK, you, you know, your top 10 cities is a massive percentage of your population and your inventory ir irrelevant. So it's scale. And then when you go into Asia, you've got 20,000 vendors across China. Um, so that's where the time comes in, but the, the hardware gets cheaper every day. Um, the demand for out of home as a medium goes up every day. So it, it takes longer in, in larger markets. It's as simple as that. You know, eventually will all the billboards across Idaho be digitized? Yes. But, you know, there's an ingestion process and it, it will take a while. So, the, yeah, in theory, the UK are ahead in terms of the percentage that they're doing. But it, it's hard to compare. You'd, you'd really have to compare the UK to New York in terms of scale and population. And in that case, everybody's kind of on a par in how they're evolving. Fair enough. And I think that's a great place to, to put a button in this. So thank you so much, Mike. We really appreciate you joining us today and lending your perspective. Thank in. you, Matt. Thanks, everyone. Speak soon. You got it. And one more thank you to Adam, uh, Adam, Adamni for their, for their partnership on today's event. Really terrific partners. And we love the support.